In this quick framework tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to create this shiny text effect, which is, as you can see, interactive. So I'm like hovering my cursor. It has like a different shine effect each and every, every single time. So yeah, it looks pretty cool. And once you learn how to do this, you can you know add it to any sort of chord or UI element that you might design. And yeah, make it interactive and yeah, shiny like this. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a fun video. Without any further ado, let me introduce myself. My name is Nandi. This is from University and let's get started. So as you can see, we are on the stripe dot, no, actually on the press.stripe.com website. And yeah, here we have a bunch of these books and all of them look really cool and they are 3D and everything. Now in this video, we're not talking about the 3D effect. In fact, I recreated this exact same thing inside of Framer. So uh, if you go to, well, okay, it's not opened. Let me just quickly open it here for you. Here it is. So I recreated the whole thing in Framer. So if you're interested in the book and everything, feel free to remix this. Actually, I'm gonna just have this in the description. Uh, but here we are focusing mainly on the on this shiny effect on the text. By the way, if you're interested in how to set up like 3D like frames in a, in a way that they like give you a 3D book or something like that, I also have a tutorial for that. So I'm gonna also leave that in the description. So if you're interested in that, make sure to watch that video. But yeah, here in this video, we're focusing on how can we make a shiny effect that like reacts to the cursor. So it looks pretty real and you know, it can add a little, you know, a nice little touch to your UI element. So Let's get in. I'm just gonna open this um, Framer project. By the way, you're gonna see in the in the remix that you're gonna get in the description that basically I recreated this book in Framer in a way, but uh, that I went into ChatGPT. I first just uploaded the original book and I asked it to remove the text and everything from the uh, book cover and only keep the woman. And it did exactly that. And then I asked it to make it like um i guess black and white or something like that to remove the background or something like that now it gave me this which was white and black i did not need the white so i just removed it with pixelmator and that's how i ended up with this only black thing that i can put on this uh blue background and yeah and then i also create generated like a little canvas linen texture um again with just a reference image and it gave me this and i could overlay that on top of the book so it has this cool little texture but this video is not about that but i just wanted to cover this now let's really talk about how that shiny effect is created so the first thing that we have to do is we sadly have to leave framer yeah i'm sorry but yeah we have to leave framer and we have to jump into figma i'm gonna just paste in the reference here because what we're gonna do is we're gonna write out this text and we have to turn that into an svg and unfortunately in framer there's no option to like turn your text into SVG, but in, in Figma we still have that. I hope that I did not like change Figma and Framer, whatever, uh, hopefully I can speak. The point is that we just have to press the on our keyboard and write the revolt of the public. Cool. So once we have this, we just have to kind of match the original, which is, you know, just small tweaks. So I'm going to probably speed this up. So I'm just gonna kind of lay over here and I'm gonna see if it matches. Well, not really. No, yeah, probably I'm not using the same font, but let's just say that this is gonna be good enough for us. Maybe we decrease the line height just a little bit more. Um, and hopefully this will be, hopefully this will be good enough. Yeah, hopefully. Now, uh, the point is that now this is not an SVG because you can see we can still write here and stuff like that. Uh, so the way we turn this into SVG inside of Figma is we right click uh, and then click one of these, uh, maybe flatten, yeah, flatten. So now you can see, I can like adjust this, it's, it's like a real SVG, um, it's no longer a text where I can write. So yeah, the great thing about this is that now we can export this as an SVG and you're going to see what we're going to do with it. So first, now just go to the right. Export, select SVG, and yeah, just export it really quickly. Okay, so now that we have this, we can jump back into Framer, and on our book cover or on our UR card, it can be anything really, we have to create a frame. 
So I already have that um, somewhere here. As you can see, we have a bunch of layers. Uh, you might get confused by these, but do not be confused. This is just for setting up the 3D setup for the book. Uh, yeah, it might be a little bit complex, but uh, let's focus on what matters now, which is a little frame for the title. Now, where it is, I think it's right here. This is the title. So as you can see, it covers the area of the title, right? Yeah. Okay. Then we add a base color, a base fill color to this frame. And you can see that this is not our title. So somehow we have to make sure that our title is written there. And the way we're going to do that is by applying that SVG mask that we exported. So we click here on the right panel to styles. And then somewhere we're going to find mask. It's already added. Look at that. So it's going to be right here on the bottom. And I'm going to click the last option here. And now I can just drag and drop my SVG that I exported from Figma. And you're going to see that, boom, it's right there. So to make sure that it doesn't crop anywhere, I can just either resize this frame to make sure that it's good, or I can just set fit and it's going to be great. Cool. Now, you might be asking, why are we doing this, right? That's, that's a valid question. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because now our text is a frame and we can put additional frames within this frame. So for example, I can just draw a little, little frame inside. Now it was not placed within. So I'm gonna do a trick. I'm gonna launch my keystroke processor and see my shortcuts. I'm gonna press Command and X on my keyboard to cut this frame that wasn't placed where I wanted to place it. And then I'm gonna select the layer where I wanna place it, which is the title. And now I'm gonna press Command and V. And as you can see, now it's placed within. And as you can see, as I move it around, it like, it highlights the specific parts of the text in a really funny way. And um, yeah, this is what we're gonna use to create the highlight effect. So I'm gonna make this a little bit larger, probably something like this, maybe even larger, I don't know. You kind of have to play around with it. I'm gonna name it light. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set a linear or not even a linear, it's gonna be a radial gradient fill color for this light frame that we placed within. And we're gonna add a few points here. Um, yeah, we, we have to do that manually. So I'm just gonna get the color here, probably something like this, really bright. And then we're gonna also get a darker color, which is right here, probably something like this. And now these two colors will be changing. Maybe I'm going to make this even brighter. Maybe this will not be that dark. I don't know. I'm just kind of playing around with this. So now all we have to do is to just add more points. And for example, here on this, we're going to have lighter. So the lighter and darker will be just changing. So let's copy and paste the darker color here. Then we're going to have the lighter here. Okay. And uh, maybe I'm gonna make them a little bit more, gonna pull them a little bit closer to each other so we can have more points. So here we're gonna have another one which is gonna be darker. I think that's gonna be it. Yeah, I think, I think that's it. So now we have this frame within. I can make this lot smaller, larger, whatever. You kind of have to again play around with it and find what works for you. But the point is that once this starts like moving around here is going to add a funny highlight effect to the text. Maybe I'm going to make it even larger. Yeah. I think this looks great. Yeah. Something like this. Um, now that we have this, all we have to do, by the way, I'm just looking at this. You can see it's kind of like, I kind of feel like that the radio gradient is somehow placed like this. So maybe I'm going to move my circle a little bit more like this. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Um, so now that, I know that we have this, uh, we can also take a look at what we would have on the canvas if we had this on the actual website. So I'm gonna just paste this in here and you can see uh, we don't really have anything. Here we have a little something, please ignore that because that has the effect that we need. But here we don't have anything. So the way we're gonna add this like moving shiny effect, this interactive shiny effect, is by making sure that we place a component called parallax hover inside of the light frame. So you might be wondering where can I get like parallax hover components and stuff like that? Well, I don't know if you know about Framer University, but it has a bunch of cool components and parallax hovers here. 
So Framework University slash resources, go searching up and search for the parallax. It's probably called parallax floating. Yeah, I did not know the name properly. It's parallax floating. So we're gonna copy this component to our clipboard. And now we can go back to Framer and, um, and we can just play, place this component within the light frame. Because the way this component works is we have to place it within the element that we want to move in an interactive way, okay? So again, you can see that I placed it in, like I just pressed Q and V, and it was it was pasted in a random frame in back two. Again, I didn't want to paste it there, so I'm gonna press Q and X. Now it's cut, it's no longer on canvas, but it's on my clipboard, so I can paste it anywhere. So I'm gonna just select the layer where I wanna place it, which is the light, Command the Wii. Now it's within. It's an invisible component, I don't even have to care about it. It's not visible. Just make sure to position it absolutely, it's not gonna push anything away. It's just gonna be there and it's gonna add the effect to the layer really nicely. So once we select this component, on the right panel you're gonna have a bunch of properties such as enabled, direction, speed and smoothing. So enabled, it's pretty easy to understand. If it's no, then it's not really gonna do anything. If it's yes, then the effect is enabled. Now the direction toward away. So if we have toward, then it's gonna move in the direction of the cursor. So as you can see, I'm moving my cursor to the top right. This gradient is moving to the top right. See? Now if I move, if I switch this to away, it's gonna move in opposite direction. So I move my cursor to the top right and it's moving away to the other side. So yeah, you decide what you wanna use. I'm gonna use away. And now the speed is how much this layer is moving. If it's small, it's not really gonna move. If it's larger, now then it's gonna move a lot. So let's just see what works for us, what gives us a nice effect. Well, um, this, this might be a little bit too much, so we can just decrease it to maybe 30. Yeah, this this looks cool. And then uh, we have a last property, which is smoothing. This is super simple. If it's zero, then it's gonna follow or, you know, do the movements in accordance with your cursor in a really strict way. So as you move your cursor, the element is also moving instantly. Now, as smoothing gets larger and larger here, so let's say it's 100, now it's gonna be a really like smooth movement. As you move your cursor, <laughs> as you can see, it's not, it's not even moving, it's barely moving because it takes so much longer for it to react to the cursor movement. But you can, you know, just have a sweet spot of like 60, 50 or 70, and then it's gonna not be so instant it's gonna be smooth, but still you're gonna see uh, that it is actually moving. Now, basically that's it. So this is how you can add these shiny effects to your elements inside the framework. So basically you mask something. It can be an illustration. It, it can be anything. I, I can actually show you another one. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Probably some sort of card. Um, yeah, it's right here. So animated 3D metal pins. So basically this was created the same way. As you can see, as I'm hovering here, it has sort of like a little shine effect. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but as it's moving, you can see there is a little shine moving on it. It's created the same way. This whole thing is masked and an additional layer, a light layer within this place with some linear gradient, with white color, probably an overlay blending mode as well, maybe some blur. And yeah, it just looks really cool. And you can see that both my or not my, but Stripe book. And this one here as well moves, not only has the shine effect, but it also moves in like a 3D, three-dimensional way, which makes this effect much cooler. It just takes it to the next level. So, you know, let's just take a look at how we can also pull this off. So the way we can pull this off is basically we move the whole thing outside of the breakpoint. So in this case, this whole book thing. I'm just gonna move it outside. Now I don't really have anything on my on my website but I'll have something on my website in just a second. So what we're gonna have to do is again frame at university uh, resources section and I'm gonna search for something like 3D look. Yeah it is right here 3D look component for framer. So if you haven't used this already I'm just gonna paste it in here. It basically allows you to turn any frame inside a framer to like a 3D element because as soon as you 
place this on the canvas, connect it to a frame. Now this here will have a 3D effect. As you can see, it just starts looking at my cursor. It looks really cool. And if I want even more 3D effect, I can just enable perspective here. And the lower this value is, the more like the crazier it will get. So as you can see now, it's just, it just has a bunch of uh, like perspective distortion. If I increase the sensitivity on the right panel, uh, you're gonna see that it's just gonna follow my cursor a little bit more and more. You can see. Looks pretty cool and it just takes it to the next level as you can see because as the book is rotating the light is also reacting to, to the rotations. So yeah, it looks pretty cool. And what you can also do with this 3D look by the way is you can enable dragging but you can play around with these other properties as well. But I'm just going to show you dragging so if you can, if you set it to enable, yes, then you're going to just have something like this where you can drag this. And uh, yeah, we, you just have a like a 3D object inside the framer. No spline, no blender, no nothing, just no code tools. And you know, at the end of the day, you just press publish on the top right, open your link and you have it live on the internet. So is it is it legal? <laughs> I don't think so, maybe. So yeah, basically that's it. That's how you can add like these shiny interactive 3D effects to your text layers, to your UI elements, to your course illustrations, whatever. So yeah, I hope that this will help you take your framer size to the next level. Uh, if you have any questions about this, make sure to drop them down in the comment section. Also check out the description because I have all the remix links and all the mentioned like videos, additional tutorials and stuff like that, that I mentioned in the video is going to be down there. So. That's it. Also, Frame.University, uh, I mentioned it a few times in this video. I think you know it already that it has a bunch of cool resources and components. So make sure to visit it daily because I'm releasing new components almost every single day. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. Make sure to like it, subscribe for more, and I'm going to see you in the next one.